So, let's talk. New Bills number one wide receiver. The guys come up, we sign him to a futures contract. Like, it's not even a... It's like practice one contract. <laughs> Duke Williams. Not that Duke Williams. I laughed on Twitter when oh, Duke Williams, the former Buffalo Bills safety, said, hey, I'd like to say thank you to all those who congratulated me, but it wasn't me. Yeah, right. <laughs> not to mention this other guy's like seven inches tall. <laughs> That Duke Williams. <laughs> it's like a major league. I got you an outfielder from the Giants. Oh, we did. How, we've referenced this. Yeah. What is the, what is his name? I got you an outfielder from the Giants. Franklin. Not those Giants. No. Your son. <laughs> so here's what happened. The Bills signed a guy, and this is a big step for me, because they signed a guy who, coming out of Auburn, was undraftable kicked off the team undraftable okay right big 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 change so it was Leo for, Collins yeah yeah a big well not kicked off but you, you get my point yeah but this is a big change for the Bills because normally the Bills have been the last two seasons gotta be a boy scout to go there well no 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 I'll, I will say this okay to argue your point really quick if they had taken him right when he left Auburn I would see your point the dude's been in Canada. Border. Yeah. Edmonton. Yeah. Where you can't get into trouble. Like, it's Edmonton. So you're saying Buffalo is the equivalent to Edmonton? I'm saying that there's there, if there was anywhere place that where there's less to do than Buffalo. I see you, I, I see you Marshawn Lynch and Marcel Darius. I raise you Marcel Darius. <laughs> what do you mean there's nothing to do here? You can get into all sorts of trouble here. You can... <laughs> I mean, you know how to deal with snow. Listen, I, mean, I, I know. Guess, on a, I guess you're already accustomed to the snow. Thing. I know on a Sunday afternoon at like five o'clock, the police blotter just blows up. Okay, <laughs> I know there's a lot to do here. I'm just saying, the kid, they, they just didn't say, "Hey, he's the leading receiver in the CFL. Let's, let's sign him right now." Right. I'm sure there were talks with him, but it just goes to show you. The one point I take away from it is the how far are they willing to go? You're scouting the CFL too. You have guys up there. I mean, that, it's got to be new news to a lot of people. I didn't know they scouted up there. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, everybody thought that our relationship with Canada ended when the Bills signed their lease agreement with New Era. <laughs> you know? Because there's always the fear that the Bills were moving to Toronto. The Toronto Bills just well, didn't let's, sound right. <laughs> before we talk about Duke, the player, I, when, I, when I look at his stats and I, I watch, you know, I go back and I watch, because, I mean, there's not a lot of game film on CFL games. you got to go back and watch Duke Williams' highlights, right? It's yeah. a little bit harder to find CFL film. Uh, like actual film that's not just sideline cameras. But um, the fact is that when you talk about the difference in the game, like I when I go back and watch the Duke Williams highlight reels, which is all you can really find, um, I see a lot of man coverage, and I see a lot of man coverage 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. You don't see any press in the CFL. Gotcha. And the reason that is is because receivers can get a running start in the CFL. So these DBs, they have to be back. They don't have a choice. They're going to get burned if they're playing press. Yep. So my question is, what really did you sign? He's not exceptionally fast. He's big. He can high point a ball. Yeah. But the whole point of signing that you know big-bodied receiver is a guy that can get out of press coverage. And this is one thing we don't know if he can do because in the CFL, they don't really – play aggressive press like no, that no so when you see him getting separation a lot of that is generated by the fact that he's gonna run and start on all these dbs sometimes he didn't know sometimes i know i understand the scope of well the that's game what i'm saying when you're you talking look about at a cfl receiver versus a uh, college receiver the rules of the game are a little bit different and they do equate to these differences when you're watching these highlight reels pay attention to where he is pre-snap and was he moving pre-snap? Was he not moving pre-snap? Where's the DB playing? Like, there's just more that you have to equate for because it does generate difference on the field as the play breaks down. I'm sure either the scout or the film that they got show that he can do that. In the, in for the a league minimum level. contract, why well, not? I don't care. Who cares? Yeah, why yeah, not? You know what I mean? So that's one. Two is this. 
we've talked a lot about this coaching staff and how stubborn they are coaching guys mm-hmm. up. Yep. You don't have a wide receiver coach at this point. Nope. So he's not even getting coached by anybody. Nope. Um, David <clears throat> David Culley's like, let me let me make you the next Dwayne Bow. <sighs> he reminds me. Duke Williams reminds me a lot of Dwayne Bow. I got to be honest with you. Don't Size. Do don't do that to the kid. Oh no, I'm telling you. Reminds, don't do that to the kid. He's like Dwayne forty Bo. pounds lighter than Dwayne Bow was. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne Bowe did look like a linebacker. Dwayne Bowe was a big man. <laughs> He's a big guy. Um, the point being is this. Okay, does this kid possess the necessary uh, talent? The things that he does well, does he do, does he does, does he do it better than anybody right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, in the CFL, so far, he has done it better than anybody in the CFL. Yeah. He can high point a ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if a corner is running with him, he spots it. He has athleticism, the agility to do this. If he once he gets the ball in his hands, how is he in the open field? All that stuff. They're starting. To, they're not evaluating everything, like you said. How's he get off a of man coverage? If he can't get off man coverage, and the plays you over. Pl- you can't play in the All right. Is he strong enough to do that? Okay, we have a whole off season to work with him. Prior to, can we get him up to two thirty? I think that's a big part of it. Right? Yeah, uh, that's that's another thing. The other thing, which I like, and you already mentioned it, is the fact that he, it, it costs you nothing. It's not costing you anything to, to sign this kid. Yeah. Uh, and it tells everybody, like, listen, we will go wherever we have to mm-hmm. to get talent. Yeah. This kid's talented. Um, so this is what's going to happen. And, you know, in Canadian football, everyone knows it. It's, or at least most people know it's, it's three downs. It's wide open. The field's even wider. Yeah. So the routes that you have. So a lot of things are going to be tighter mm-hmm. when he comes to the NFL. I don't know if the guy that they had, like, he played football his whole life. Then played college. Then for two years he had to unlearn. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that gets me about it. For two years he had to unlearn everything that he had learned playing American football. Yeah. And then in the second year, he was considered the best wide receiver in Canadian football. Mm-hmm. That's up here. He learned everything he needed to as fast as he could. Now you could say that the talent up there isn't as good, and he just blue by guys and all that. Well, the but quarterback he was able play to... isn't, is, isn't as good either. So, I mean, the counter-argument there is the, the guys throw... Because the receivers are dependent on their on their quarterback. They're throwing almost every down. Though. Yeah. Okay? But the thing is, if you want to look at an aspect as a good signing, he had to adjust how he had been playing the game his whole life, and he did it in two years. So, adjusting back, I don't think is going to be the problem. Mm-hmm. I, I worry about what you worry about is the fact that the problem we had with our wide receivers was getting guys off of him. Can he do that? If he can do that, all the other stuff seems to line up with what he's capable of doing. I like the thought process for the type of player that he is. Yes. Right? yes. The problem is that I can't evaluate really if he is that type of player. If you just take a look at the stat sheet and you take a look at his profile page, you can go, okay, this guy could probably get, this guy could probably muscle his way through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? The problem, I haven't seen that. I don't know if he can because didn't really do that at Auburn either because he, I mean, how much did we get to watch him? Not a lot, right? I mean, again, this was a kid that didn't take, that took college uh, in a very Johnny Manziel way, but just didn't get Johnny Manziel treatment, oh. right? But that's the truth. He wasn't a superstar. I'm sure there are a lot of guys that do that. Yeah. And, and maybe going to Canada humbled him and taught him lessons. Maybe it didn't. But for league minimum, I get what you're trying to do. You need that type of player. You're signing at league minimum a special teams guy. Let's keep in perspective that if he's got to play special teams. Period. The end. He's got to play special teams to make this roster. That's it. He's got to play special teams, and that's okay. a guy that I would love to play special teams. I would love for him to play special yep. teams. Yeah. But um, depending on things, what they think of him, though. some of the things he does well is he does high point a ball pretty well, right? He extends for the football. I like that. He's not Zay Jones letting the football get in on him. Yeah. He has pretty good vision for where the ball is in flight, so I like that. Okay. The difference here is that you're talking about taking a kid that – I'm going to equate this to baseball, okay? Gotcha. I want you to go and put on catcher's I know gear. Where he's going. I know where he's and going. I want you to go catch a high school baseball game. <laughs> Come on. And now I want it's not you, high school. And now I want you to go. They're professionals up there. I'm talking about the speed of the pitch. I know. And now I want you to go. <laughs> I want you to catch for a Raldis Chapman and a 104 mile an hour smoke coming at you in Yankee Stadium. Not saying that Buffalo, <laughs> not, not saying you wear a field in Yankee Stadium are any way equatable. I'm just talking about the velocity that he's going to be subjected to from Josh Allen. It's going to be like something space. In, in a tighter space. It's going to be something he's never seen before. We might see a lot of this, like you know, turn bong. 
You know what I mean? Okay. So there's there's going to be a lot of adjustment that he's going to need. And if he's not in Buffalo now and working with Josh Allen now, then this is a kid that's not taking his job very seriously. I want to know where he is right now. Uh, where is he? To add to that, my point is this. I would never ask... Uh, I would never ask... Uh, Isaiah McKenzie mm -hmm. to run a jump ball route. No. He's going to run those little short intermediate screens and do all that stuff, mm -hmm. okay? The kid's strength is high pointing a ball. Yeah. Put him in the red zone, mm -hmm. put him in the slot, and let him run straight up the field. Don't have him run the slants. Don't have him take those heaters. Yeah. Because that's not, that's not where his strength is, you know I mean, to, to your point. Okay, we're not going to put him in a position to be unsuccessful. But he, he can go, he can high point the ball. He can get to make those tough catches in the middle. So I want to let make him go high and get it. So I want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. So what you're suggesting is, is that, that we that, sign a five hundred thousand dollar wide receiver not to run in routes. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure that I'm I'm clear with that. So to prepare for this, he should be doing what Happy Gilmore did at the beginning of his movie, where he walks into the batting cages and he just stands there. Ah! I'm not saying that he can't do it. I'm just trying to offer an addition slash counter to your point and the fact that... If you just want him to run 12-yard comeback routes, then he might as well just go into a pitching machine and just take him off the chest all day long to get ready for catching Josh Allen fastball. Yeah, we said that many a time. You know, those, gloves, those gloves help everybody. Oh, God, yeah. That should be a challenge. What? Josh Allen Trying challenge? to catch a Josh Allen uh, pass from 30 yards away with one hand wearing those gloves. Ooh. The, the Josh Allen Jugs Challenge brought to you by Buffalo Orthopedic. <laughs> I want to put LASIK in there, too. <laughs> <laughs>